guys and welcome back to another M Creator tutorial. So today I'm going to be updating my older um, how to install Forge and Forge mods and stuff like that. So I made a, a video a long time ago that you guys had some questions over the years about it. So I thought I would cover a updated version, basically explain some extra methods that I am more aware of and we'll see if we can't uh, break it down into two parts. So first part will be how to export it for basically regular use, uh, client use, and the other one is for development. So we'll break that into two parts. Uh, the first part uh, for client has four different topics, so we'll start with that. And then the, the final part is basically the development, which has two parts that's on its own, and then we'll go into some general questions. So let's get started. So to actually export your mod, uh, what you need to do first is you're going to need to generate your code. This is for both versions, uh, both the client and development versions of your mod. So once you've done that, it will basically build uh, your workspace. This will take a couple seconds and then what you need to do, or pardon me, regenerate. And then what you need to do is basically click on the build button. This will make sure that if there's any errors that it will pop up uh, in the process of it being regenerated. So basically what this is doing with the regeneration is making sure that all the components are basically updated and if there's any errors, it will let you know in here. Uh, before you export your mod, make sure that you correct those errors or you will have a pretty unstable jar. So after that, make sure to click the little hammer icon. This will do a quick build and make sure that everything else is ready to go. After you've done that, what you can do is you can click on the workspace and then click on the one where it says export mod for distribution. You can also click control E and it will export that way. And we will do that quickly. And then we can, we're presented with this window and then we can go ahead and give our jar a name. Uh, generally you wanna list what your mod jar is. So the title of your works your actual mod uh, this can be your namespace um, for your mod and then maybe the version for it would be important and then followed by the for what version the mod is for this is standard practice for most minecraft jars for mods so something like i believe i'm on my economy and then we can go 1.0.1 .1. this is what version i haven't released the mod yet so that's why it would be that version and then we can go four and then 1.19.2 because that's what currently we have the mod for. And then we would save it to somewhere we can easily access. I'm gonna select my desktop and then we'll use that as the client version. So you'll need two things in order to do the next step for installing Forge. The first thing that you'll need is you'll need to go to uh, Forge, I think it's dot um, is it no forge.net so you'll need to go to forge.net and then you'll have to get the recommended build but before you do that make sure that you have the right version selected in this case uh, we want 1.19.2 because that's the version that we're on and then you want to click the installer so you're going to download this you'll need to make sure that you have any ad blockers disabled or this might this button might not show up i had a problem with that uh, when i was recording this video so click skip and then you can download it make sure that it's somewhere easily accessible we're going to put it on our jar our, our desktop for now now before you do anything else uh, what you're going to need to do is if you don't have java uh, you're going to need java as well so generally you don't need it for minecraft but you do need it for installing forge so we're going to go and go to java.net I think it might be com actually. I don't know. We'll just type Java in just to be safe. So it's java.com. And then you're going to click on the top link right here. And then you want to click on the download button. So basically what this will do is it'll bring you to this page. You click on the download Java. And what will happen is you want the JRE version, uh, Java Runtime Environment uh, for Windows 64-bit. So once you have that or whatever version that you need it for, I think it might automatically pick the download that you need. So uh, once you have that, make sure to install Java. Now, if you don't have the icon for the Java uh, coffee cup thing, what you're gonna need to do is click on one of the jars and then you're going to need to go to properties 
and then you want to go to what's the properties yeah properties and then type of file and then opens with change so you want to change the file and then you're going to want to select more apps on windows and then scroll down to the bottom where it says looking for another app now sometimes apps will replace the execution for what opens the file sometimes this happens sometimes on certain applications it just is the way it is this uh is the button that you want to click and then what you want to do is you want to find where your java is installed after installing java and then you want to go to jre and then the bin and then what you want to do is you want to find java w so java w.exe this one right here and then you want to click open and then what you want to do is make sure that when you do select um I think it's under this box here somewhere in here it basically says the uh, that you can open it always with that particular app so in that case you'll have to check that button and then it will basically always open and run that particular one uh, in some cases for forge for example you might have to unblock the jar because it's an application so you would have to unblock it and then install forge uh, when you click on the exe what should happen is you'll generate a file for the log and then you'll have this window set up uh, this gives you a couple options you can have install uh, install server and extract uh, generally you want install client for regular use server is only if you're running a server on your client uh, like your computer or whatever in most cases you'll just need the client version and then select the path for your uh, minecraft where you're the roaming folder is located in this case it will should be always set up at this location unless you're on a different platform and then you might need to set it up on a different os uh, directory or whatever once you have that it will install it to your regular minecraft's profile or at least where the installation is and that's this next part so booting up minecraft what you'll need to do is set up a actual profile for your installation for forge now we have forge by this point installed when you install the client uh, what you will need to do is you'll need to go to installations and then you will create a new installation and then what you want to do is search for that um, forge version so that you just installed in this case i have two forge versions 1.18 0.2 and 1.19 those are the ones that i've basically chosen you will select that jar for the version the forge and then you want to give it a name i generally put it under a specific directory i will get into that a little bit but um basically just call it like forge and then maybe 1.19.2 and then whatever profile you want to give this profile a name so uh for example i have two already so i do like three or something like that uh, this would make sure that the profiles will be easily recognized and then you can basically set it up in a, a way that you can remember which one has specific mods on it. Uh, you can give it any particular name that you want, but um, when you're doing the directory, like in my case, what I do is I don't put it under the .minecraft folder. What I do is I go and install it under, um, I believe it's not app data it should be i don't think it's actually under there either i think it's programs games and then minecraft and then i have all my different versions here so the ones with f is basically forge so i have two versions for 1.19 one for testing one for not uh same with the 1.18 version so you basically set up a profile here just create a new folder and then you can basically set up a forge version for that profile once you've done that you can click create and then it will add it to the list here and then you can basically run the game now this is important uh, because you need to generate the profile in order the files in the profile folder once you've done that what you can do is you can when you're already in setup into the game you can click on the mods tab button on the home screen and you can basically get in there so we'll do that quickly so once you're at the title screen you should have a mods folder and then you'll be able to open the folder 
and it should be automatically empty um, because this is a profile that's already set up. Um, it will have some mods because I already put some in, but what you want to do is you want to put your client mod into this folder and then it will basically uh, be installed. Now if there's any errors when you reboot the game, like the uh, world, which you will need to do uh, in order to set it up properly, uh, you will need to sort out those issues. Uh, sometimes there's conflicts if IDs or something that are the same. Uh, in most cases, most recent versions, uh, this is pretty non-existent because namespaces and stuff now, but in the small case that you're using a mod with the same namespace, it might have conflict. Um, outside of that, once you've done this, exit out and reboot the game, and then the mod will be installed. Now for the development version. Now we'll start the development version right now. So for exporting your development version, what you need to do is make sure to regenerate the code and pretty much do the same thing as you did with the client version, but we're going to use a different system. So once this is finished uh, compiling, what you need to do is build and then we can finally move on to the next. All right, so we need to build first and this will take only a couple sections usually to generate and then what we can go and do is go to workspace and then we want to export, um, I can't really pronounce that particular word, but basically what this is, is it's an uncompressed version of your jar. So basically what it can do is it can run in the test environment rather than on client worlds. So we can export this version and this particular version is good for if you want other mods to easily tie, tap into your mod and test things for the thing. Now it's still technically a jar, um, so they won't be able to set up the workspace and stuff, but uh, what you can do is allow them to actually test uh, certain features and then they can have an easier time adding support for your mod. So in this case, what we would want to do is we would want to go ahead and do the same names, name system, but at the end, what we're gonna call it is just something like dev. And then we can basically indicate that this is a development version. So you would save this jar, and then under a different workspace, what you'll do is install. So I'm under another workspace now. It's a Tale of Biomes. It's that uh, lore series that I'm working on. And then what we'll do is we'll go to the workspace, open workspace folder. And then we should have a folder like this. We want to go into a run folder and go into mods. And then what we have is our jar that we just exported, the one that says dev. And then we're gonna put that into the mods folder. Now, in order to actually run this, we're gonna go back to the test environment. We're gonna press the play button and it's gonna take a couple seconds to start up. Now, if it doesn't start up, most likely you have exported a client version and it will basically not run the mod properly as you're expected. It needs to be literally the um, Diob use Uscated? I don't know how to pronounce it, uh, but it's that particular one right above the regular uh, export for distribution. So we'll let the game load up and then we'll basically show you that it basically... Um, all right, so very similar to the client version, you're going to have a mods folder and then you can see that there is the Tales of Biome. That's the mod that we're currently uh, running for the test. And then we have My Economy and then this is basically 4.0. Now, I, I thought I might have not published it, but I have published it apparently. So you can click on the mods folder and it'll bring you to the mods folder as well. So just like the regular one, and it should at this point uh, load the game just fine. So if you're in the screen, you should have no issues. All right, so general questions, we'll move on to that next. So the first thing that I get quite often uh, in the comments is um, how can I install my mod? Well. You need, you can't run the jar in order to install it. That doesn't work because it's like a actual file system. Uh, the forge is a exe, but technically it's a um, jar. So in order to run it, you need Java. It's a certain system that they have set up for actually running it and actually installing the um, forge API. Uh, where jars are not designed for that. Um, either jar for the development or client uh, is not designed for actually running. 
Uh, client mods will not work on the test environment and the dev develop mods will not work on the client environment. So that's basically one of those things that you'll have to make sure that you have the right one. That's why we named it the way it is. You could even put client at the end, but in most cases you won't. You can just stick development or dev on the end of your jar for the other one to indicate that it's a development version. And then we have um, workspace uh, storage. So you can't actually import a jar workspace. Uh, these are not designed for storing your mods. If you don't have a workspace uh, basically exported, so if you go to your mods folder, or your, your mod, go to workspace, I think, file, no file, and then export workspace to shareable zip. Uh, you need to do that to back up your, your mods. Exporting it as a, a jar and distributing it will not actually work for importing it. There's no way to actually decompile all that data that once it's compiled. So make sure that you actually go and export it. Now, if you want to back it up, you can also use a service like uh, GitHub to use the entire workspace folder. In some cases I do that for my mods. Uh, it's a little bit more advanced, but if you're doing a general backup, you can just basically export the shareable zip and then you can import the shareable zip. Both will work uh, just fine for importing your workspace and then you don't lose your thing. You could also upload these directly to GitHub and then you'll be able to keep a copy of your files somewhere safe on the internet. Now, that's uh, all that I have time for today. If you are new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, comment down below, rate the video, and I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out.